Welcome to 8 Minute Crimes. We upload multiple videos each week, and we are working on obtaining exclusive interrogations in the very near future. It's free to like, it's free to subscribe, and it really does help the channel immensely. So if you like consistent content, and you like what we're doing here, let us know. We would love to have you along for the journey. Information about this case is in the description box below. Enough rambling, let's get into it. Betty, right there, if it's if okay with you. Thanks for coming in. And, uh, <coughs> accommodating. shooting from the other night. Mm -hmm. You're aware of that and that's why, why we're here together. Um, we've already talked with Officer, or sorry, sorry, Sergeant Darko and um, I'm explain the same thing to you that we did with him and I've spoken with, uh, with Mr. Pop about this next step as well. We're a criminal investigation agency. We've been called in by your department to act as an independent investigating entity to determine the facts of what happened the other night. Um, as a part of that, the, uh, due to the unfortunate death of, uh, of the subject, the, um, there is as a potential for this criminal investigation, we always, as a matter of protocol, read Miranda rights to, the, to people in your position as being one of the officers that was involved. Okay, so um, we want to we do it for a couple of reasons. One is this is not an internal investigation. It's a criminal investigation, um, but not necessarily pointed at anything right now. We are um, uh, going to read you this and ask you to sign it. Do you have any issue with doing that? No. Yeah. Okay. And are you here voluntarily? Yes. Okay. You realize you're free to free to go from our <coughs> standpoint if you want to go. Yes. Okay. Okay, Sean. Uh, I know you're familiar with this, but we we typically read it as well as <coughs> look at it, and it's going to be a couple of parts here. So I'm going to read it to you out loud. Um, before we ask you any questions, you must understand your rights. You do have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can be used against you in court or other proceedings. You have the right to talk to a lawyer before advice, before we ask you any questions, and to have him with you during questioning. If you can't afford a lawyer, won't be appointed for you before any questioning if you wish. If you decide to answer questions now without a lawyer present, you will still have the right to stop the questioning at any time. You also have the right to stop the questioning at any time until you talk to a lawyer. We realize your lawyer is here, but uh, understand all that? Yes. Okay. If you would, please sign, date, and put the, I'm sorry, <coughs> sign, date, and put the time right there. This mark has 109 is what I have, if that works for you. All right. It's 8-8 today, 8-14. Okay, and then one more part. This is the waiver of rights. Um, so this would be you, you, this will say that you have read the statement of your rights. It has been read to you. You understand what your rights are. You're willing to make a statement, answer questions. You don't want to learn at this time. Uh, you understand and know what you're doing. No promises or threats have been made to you and no pressure or coercion of any kind has been used against you. You hereby voluntarily and intentionally waive your rights and are willing to make a statement and answer questions. Yes. Okay. If you agree to that, do the same. At the same time, we'll work, Sean. Okay, thank you. I'm just going to take care of the last bits of getting the witness line signed on that. You mind again, sir? Yep. Full spot. <coughs> Was it convenient for you to come in today? Yeah. Okay. Sean, the reason my computer is up here is we're going to show you uh, some video from the store. Well, we're going to talk a little bit first, show you some video from the store. We're going to listen to the radio traffic again, see if that helps jar your memory about anything. Not that it necessarily needs it, but uh, to get us on the same track of what we're listening to and seeing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, <coughs> Sean, um, is your full name Sean Williams? Um, yes. Okay. How do you spell your first name? S-E-A-N. Okay. What's your rank, sir? Patrolman. Patrolman. What's your badge number? 90. Okay. Is that also the radio sign you use? 
Yeah. How many years you've been with Fever Creek? Um, nine. Okay. It, as your, um, what's the extent of your law enforcement experience? Um, I got hired on March um, here at Beaver Creek. Okay, so all the years of law enforcement have yeah. been here. Yeah, okay. Okay. We're going to have a lot of questions for you. Um, trying to do a thorough investigation for, and we're just here to gather the facts. Like I said, we don't make determinations about what occurred. We gather the facts from all types of sources, you being uh, a primary source of the information we're going to have and we present that to the prosecutor's office for, for their review. That's, that's the way it is. And this goes, I don't know if you've been involved in, in these types of things before, we'll get to that as well. Um, what we would like to start, if it's good with you, is, again, we're going back to the Tuesday the 5th, the evening at Walmart. Um, we want you to start wherever you feel is appropriate about your initial knowledge of what was going on at Walmart that night and just tell the whole thing through. We'll, we'll try to interrupt you not too much at first, and then we're going to keep rolling back a little bit. Okay. Work for you? Yeah. Okay, so Tuesday night, <coughs> that's a good starting point. Yeah. Yep. Start whatever you like. Um, I was, um, that particular evening, I was doing paperwork behind Walmart um, when the tone dropped on the radio. But, um, um, and I, because you were you, you were already there before you got a call, you were at the Walmart. Correct. Why did you happen to be there? Um, I had just uh, taken a crash report at the BW3s um, right across the way. And sometimes I go by Walmart because nobody usually goes back there just to kind of sit and do paperwork and okay. um, don't usually get bothered back there. Good enough. Sorry, go ahead. Sounds great. So um, the tone drops on my radio signaling an emergency um, from dispatch. And they dispatched two units. Um, they just, I forget which units exactly they were. Um, uh, they just dropped the tone and stated two units on the radio, then they kind of hesitated on the radio, um, so I didn't know exactly what was going on at first. So I brought up my computer, brought up the call screen, double clicked the call and saw that it was at 3360 Pentagon. And I'm like, okay, I'm right here. Mm -hmm. So um, I just immediately started heading towards the, around the side towards BP, towards the front of Walmart, and that's when um, dispatch started giving, um, um, started explaining what the call was about. Um, they dispatched two units and stated um, that there was a subject with a gun inside Walmart. Um, they stated that he was waving the gun around, um, that he was pointing it at people, and that it was a rifle type weapon, mm -hmm. and that he was loading it. Um, at the time of the dispatch, he was loading it, is what dispatch said. Um, so I arrived on scene, um, and based on the fact that it was a rifle and that he was pointing at people, winging around, and loading it, um, I deployed my rifle. I pulled to the front of the store, got out, called out that I was on scene, and uh, I pulled out my rifle, and my goal at that time was to wait for the next unit to arrive, and we were going to um, um, go in, basically. Mm -hmm. So. <clears throat> So I on scene, I parked um, by the easternmost entrance doors, um, kind of by the um, food area, okay. um, because that's like the, the closest doors there were. Mm -hmm. So I parked there, and then we got word that he was in the pet area, which was in the opposite side of the store mm -hmm. from where I was parked. By that time, I could see a unit coming down Pentagon Boulevard, another car. So I just ran to the other side to where he parked and ended up being um, Sergeant Darko. So as I ran up to him with my rifle, he was in his trunk getting his tactical vest on and getting his rifle as well. Um, as I waited for him to get ready, um, um, dispatch said that the caller still had an eye on him um, and that he was in the pet section. Um, and then I confirmed with dispatch before we went in, I confirmed with them, I asked if he was in fact pointing the rifle at people. Mm -hmm. And uh, they confirmed, yes, that he was mm -hmm. pointing the rifle at people. So, um, based on everything we knew at that time, um, um, Sarge and I were just going to go straight to the suspect. Um, 
at that point, we were going to go in through the um, the, um, the garden center doors, mm -hmm. but it was like barricaded by big metal like gate fence. Okay. So we, couldn't, we couldn't gain entry through there, which would have been like the closest entrance mm -hmm. to the pet area. Mm -hmm. So we went one entrance to the east, which was closer to like the pharmacy. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I, we were right outside the door and we kind of gave each other a nod that we were going in. And then uh, we made entry into the uh, into Walmart. Um, we walked straight in and immediately it, it was, the store was very, very crowded. Um, um, as we made our way towards the, the pet area, I mean there were families everywhere, kids walking around. Um, there's people all over the place crowding the main, mm -hmm. the main um, drag. Um, I don't know how to explain it. Like the main um, hallway area, I guess, mm -hmm. separating the different uh, departments. Okay. Um, it was very, very crowded. Mm -hmm. So we're passing people, kind of scanning both directions as we're heading back towards the pet area, um, just to see if we could um, find the person. I guess I should. Um, rewind for a second. They said it was a black male um, that, that had the rifle. So um, as we're walking, like at that time, the, the particular area we were in, it didn't seem like anybody was too alarmed at that point. Um, uh, just in the bulk of the, the middle or right outside the pharmacy, people seemed to be acting normal. Um, so I even asked, I asked one person just at random if he had seen anybody with a gun walking around and he said no. Um, so we just kept clearing the, the road as quickly as possible as we headed back towards the pet area. So we um, reach the pet area, which I think is like three or four aisles in the, in the far um, um, southwest corner of the store. Um, we, um, so we carefully start scanning back because we can, the last report was used back there. So, um, Darko's kind of scanned to the left, and I'm kind of looking to the right, covering them, and then we reach the, the end where there's only one more row left in the pet area. Mm -hmm. So, based on uh, the witnesses, there's a good chance, you know, I thought that he was there to the left. Um, at that point, um, I kind of told Darko, because there's a long hall to the right as well, so if Darko would have made that left turn to the final row, he had been exposed all the way to the end of the store to the right. Mm -hmm. So I told him I was going to cover him to the right while he um, scanned to the left. So he um, scanned to the left and I kind of briefly glanced to the right and as soon as I glanced to the right I heard him yell, drop your weapon, drop your weapon, um, um, in like a repeated manner. Mm -hmm. So as soon as he said that I swung around to his right and kind of cleared him so I could see what he was looking at talking to us. So we were kind of side by side. Mm -hmm. And as soon as I turned around and looked down the hall or towards the end of the, the pet area, I saw a black male holding uh, what immediately popped out with me, at me was a rifle. I saw a rifle um, in hand. Um, and I could see the silhouette of a magazine and it looked like a rifle. Um, so as Sergeant Darko commanded him to drop the weapon, um, he did not do so. Um, he made, um, I'm trying to find words to describe this over the last few days, um, he did not drop the weapon. Um, he made a movement to what I um, interpreted as aggressive. Um, he did, as he was moving with the rifle and was not dropping it, and um, I felt at that time he had the rifle in a position to where he could have raised it up or he could have um, shot either me or Sergeant Darko, and I also felt that if he were to escape around the end and make um, way to the rest of the store that um, all the families and the kids were uh, in the immediate uh, risk as well. So at that point, when he didn't drop the weapon and he started making movements with it, um, I felt that my life was at risk. I felt that Sergeant Darko's life was at risk. 
I felt that all the families that we passed walking into the store, the children, um, I thought they were all at risk as well. Um, due to all those circumstances and with him failing to obey Sergeant Darko's command, um, I fired two shots at uh, center mass at the, at the subject. Um, at that point, he went down and dropped the rifle and kind of almost disappeared behind the end of the row. Um, um, so we started to make our way, and as we're making our way, I could see the rifle, and I could see the, the, um, the black male, and as we're making our way to the rifle, I could see that it was, still, it was a rifle. Mm -hmm. And as we made our way to him, he like jumped back up and started running towards the rifle again. Um, he was saying something, but I couldn't hear. Um, I, I couldn't hear anything at that point. My ears were ringing. Um, so he was saying something. I was just telling him to get down, get down, get down, because at that point he was already a threat to us, and um, I was forced to engage him. And then he was about to come back towards that weapon again. Mm -hmm. So I felt just everything about him was aggressive. He came back at us after he'd already been shot um, to what I considered to, to get the rifle again. So um, he was about at the threshold where I was um, considering shooting again when he collapsed. He came back towards us at the rifle and I'm telling him to get down, get down, get down, get down, get down, get down the ground. And um, he, um, he kind of reaches the area of the rifle and kind of just collapses. Um, so um, kind of walk past the rifle and immediately scan around, make sure there's no other threats. And um, I um, tell him to roll over onto his belly um, and put his hands behind his back. Um, he was kind of squirming and yelling and screaming, um, stuff that I couldn't understand. And he wasn't immediately um, cooperative as far as putting his hands behind his back. I had to get on top of him and kind of pull his hands together um, to cuff him. Mm -hmm. um, when I cuffed him, I could see he had a very serious injury to, to one of his elbows, and he had another wound to his other uh, to his other arm. I can't remember which arm was which that had the, the severe wound. Um, so my immediately my immediate thought was, okay, he's down. He's injured. There's no immediate threats in the immediate area. Um, now we have to um, treat him as a, as a patient, basically, who's, who's been wounded. So I told, um, by that time, other units were right on the scene, and um, Matt Stahl was there. Um, I either, I forget if I told him on the radio, if I told him personally to go grab his medical kit. And I know one of our officers, um, Officer Bondi, he um, always carries a tourniquet. Mm -hmm. So my initial thought was I did a quick, um, I looked him over um, head to toe, and from um, what I could tell, he only had wounds to his arms okay. from what I could see. Uh, we even pulled his shirt up, and I couldn't see any, any rounds to his body uh, from what I could see. Okay. So um, my goal at that time was to um, treat what we could see, which was the wounds of the arm. So I had um, Officer Stahl bring the medical kit, and Officer Bonnie brought a tourniquet. Um, the medical, medical kit that Officer Stahl brought also had a tourniquet in it. So Officer Stahl applied tourniquets to his arms to, uh, to stop the bleeding to the, to the arms. Um, and he was still um, making noises and moving. Um, as we stood over him. And I just kept giving him words of encouragement, told him to stay awake, stay awake. Um, there were a couple times where it seemed like he passed out or fell asleep, and I just kind of was tapping him on the, on the side of the face, trying to get him to wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up, just trying to keep him awake and keep him alive. Um, the medics were there probably right when the tourniquets were applied, and um, we basically just um, assessed his condition, kept him awake, um, tried to keep him conscious until the medics could get there where they have you know, better tools.
um, that we did at the time. So the medics got there and um, um, started treating them. Mm -hmm. um, at that point, once they did their assessment, they loaded them up and, and um, took them away. And then after that, I met with um, Darko, like kind of in the side hall, and he took uh, he took my rifle and gave me his rifle. And um, I, he, I knew it was probably just for evidence um, because they, they were going to have to take it eventually. So he took my rifle and gave me his. I eventually gave his rifle to Officer Stahl, and then I made my way outside and uh, met Officer Darko outside the doors, and we just kind of. Um, stood there until we were given further directions. Okay. Sean, were you injured at all during that entire incident? No. Okay. Um, we'll go back through slowly, and uh, some is going to jump around when we ask questions. So I know it's tough to, to talk about and sit through it. If you need a break, maybe have to just let us know. Okay. Um, were you on were you on regular duty that night? What's your duty shift? Oh, it's eleven AM to eleven PM. Okay. So you were nearing the end of your shift. Um, what, what time approximately were you in the Walmart parking lot? I I got there some paperwork around like seven forty five. Okay. Seven forty five. Okay. And do you recall just from I know I know a lot of information has come out even in the media, I'm not sure if you paid attention, but about the times and so forth, do you recall approximately the time the call came in? Yeah, it was around eighteen twenty. I believe. Okay. Um, 18.20 would be 6.20 p.m. So... I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah. 20.20. It, it's, yeah. Military right. time gets me a lot too, but it's just something like this. All right. So about 8.20 p.m. Correct. Okay. And that is during the course of your normal duty shift, so you had about three hours left on duty that night. Yeah. Okay. Okay, and Sean, are you on administrative leave right now from the department? Um, that's what the chief told me about, um, that I was. Okay, okay. And did they uh, did he say to you that that's part of what typically just occurs in a situation? That's what the department does in a situation like this. Yes. Okay. Any officer involved in the shooting just typically goes on administrative leave. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll start near the near the beginning there. <coughs> You were already in the Walmart parking lot. You said the tone came in for call to that Walmart, and you said you, you worked your way around to the front. Is that mm -hmm. accurate? Did you walk around or you drove around? I drove around. Okay. Since you're already there, did you activate your lights and sirens? No. Okay. Did you feel need to at that point? No. Okay. Um, is it accurate that the cruiser cameras, do you have a cruiser camera in your vehicle? Yes. Okay. Is it accurate that those are only activated by two means? One is to activate the lights and sirens, and the camera comes on. The other option is to do it manually. Yes. Okay. Since you didn't activate your lights and sirens, you didn't have the cruiser camera on, um, and you did not activate the cruiser camera manually either, correct? I did not. Okay. In the in the front of the store, you and and um, I'm not sure if you said his full name or not, but we just interviewed him, so it kind of went together. You said Darko. We're referring to who? Sergeant Dave Darko. Okay. He was the only other officer on scene at the time, at the Correct. immediate time. Yes. Okay. And you engaged him. You guys met up at the, with some like the truck of his vehicle. Mm -hmm. Okay. And do you recall speaking to him about what was your conversation? Um, if you if you had any at that time, what was your conversation? The only thing we really said was um, we, we didn't really have an extended conversation. He was gearing up mm -hmm. and we made our way to the door. Mm -hmm. The dispatch was continually um, giving us information. So um, while he was standing there, that's when I confirmed with dispatch if he was pointing the, the rifle at people. Mm -hmm. And they said yes. And then we, we just, uh, just based on training, we just knew what we were going to do. We're just going to go straight to the threat. So we kind of said, are you ready? And he said, let's go. That's it. Let's okay. In the front. Okay. Uh, you guys can't get into one entrance. You go to another one. You get inside. And are, do you recall um, either you or, your, or our Sergeant Darko given any instructions to customers in the store? Um, I do recall, I, I think he told 
a few people right in the beginning to get it. Like I think there's there's some people standing around looking at us like what the heck's going on, mm -hmm. and he told them just to just to leave. Okay. Um. Um. So I, I, that's the only time I recall him okay. telling anyone I believe. What What are you looking for at that point as you're entering the store? What's What's your What's your thought? Um. My thought is that we have to, based on the the calls, um, and the situation, and what information was given to us, we had a threat in the store, um, and there was a threat to everyone in the store, and we're trained to go immediately, as quickly and as possible, mm -hmm. to that threat. Okay. So our goal was to go to where we knew the threat was, while still carefully making sure it wasn't in the crowd. Gotcha. Um, so our goal was to just move as quickly and efficiently as possible to the threat. Okay. And you, you mentioned training. What kind of training have you had in that regard? Um, well, two weeks ago we had um, we had a active shooter training, okay. and we went through scenarios exactly like this, where there's people with weapons, um, people that were that were actively shooting, and then people that just had weapons in in in, um, in an occupied building. And in that training, we're told to go straight, um, to go straight to the threat, bypassing people, um, and um, and containing it mm -hmm. as best as possible. And that's what, that's how you would describe what you did. Uh, yes. In response. Okay. Yes. And so you felt like the training that you even just recently had was relevant to this this exact situation. Yes. Okay. Have you had? Um, and uh, it sounds like active shooter training. I'm not sure if you just responded that way. Yeah. Or not. It, have you had that type of training before? Yeah, we have it. We have it usually once a year. Okay. Um, and again, that training specifically tells you as the first responding officer, there's a if there is a threat or an identified threat, you go directly to the threat. Is that what you're saying? Correct. Okay. And you and. Tech, um, Sergeant Darko didn't need to discuss that. You felt like you both had been trained on this enough. You're seasoned officers. You're going in the door and, and looking for the threat. Yes, that's okay. Good. You don't you don't recall specifically yourself discussing anything with uh, giving commands to customers, but you did recall at one point um, asking. Did you say you asked the customer or, or sorry? Did you say you asked the customer or something at one point? Or oh, I did ask. Associate. Um, when we first walked in. There are just people everywhere, and some some of them didn't. I mean, just the one guy asked. He didn't seem too alarmed or anything, so just kind of asked like some one of the first people I saw. Like, if you see anyone with a gun, mm -hmm. he said no. Okay. Um, so uh, that's pretty much the only person I asked. Okay. And we were starting to focus. Okay. Yeah. Um, on that um, on that particular direction and area of the pet area. What were you? What were you? Um, what was your uniform that night? Um, I'm on the bike patrol, um, so I was wearing um, a two-tone bicycle uniform top, white with black, mm -hmm. and then black shorts um, and shoes. Okay, well you're on the bike patrol, but you were in a cruiser that night. Yes. Okay. And uh, <laughs> how's that? Uh, how's that uniform outfitted? Where's your Where's your badge? Where's um, there's a badge. Um, there's a plain badge, a plain view, has my name on it, has please cross the black uh, back. Okay. Um, I'd have to look at it. It may, may, see, may see police, say police on the front okay. as well. It says please cross the back, probably yeah. a reflected mm -hmm. material for being on the bike patrol. The uh, um, officer, I'm sorry, Sergeant Darko, um, you said he got some things out of his trunk when you were staging to get in there. What was he getting out of the trunk again? Um, he was putting on, when I ran up to this cruiser, he was putting on a tactical vest, okay. um, which we can carry. Um, it says police on it. You can carry extra magazines and and anything else uh, yeah. that you need to carry in an active shooter type scenario. He was putting that on and he had his rifle and getting his rifle out. What kind of rifle does he have, if you recall? Um, he has a, we're only allowed to carry an AR-15 style okay. rifle. Okay. And that's what he had, your best your recollection? Yes. Okay. Did you have a tactical vest yourself? No. Okay. Did you, did you not assign one? I didn't, I don't have one. Okay. 
So it's just you in the uniform. It's, it's mostly white, the top mostly white? Or the top mostly white. Okay. Yeah. Um, Sean, do you recall um, either of you identifying yourselves as police at any point during that response? Um, I don't recall that being said. Okay. Um, would you, were you based into that on, is that something you would normally do? Um, it depends on the, the speed of, of, of what's going on. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, it, when we reach the end, if you're talking about the final, um, when we confronted him, uh, when we confronted the suspect, um, he was already giving, my sergeant was already giving commands to him, um, and that's what kind of drew my attention back to him. So um, he was giving commands, and um, I didn't have time really to say, to say anything myself um, to him um, before, um, before I shot. Okay. Um, stick on that for a minute. We might have jumped a little uh, uh, too far ahead on you to um, keep the flow going for you. The you recall Darko. If we're up to the point where we're at, at the uh, at the subject, you recall Darko saying, "Drop your weapon, drop your weapon." Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. Did you say something further to the suspect after that or before that? I did not. Okay. Going back to um, going back to your training for a minute, Sean. The uh, what additional training have you had? Um, law enforcement nine years. We have a lot of training in law enforcement. What what additional specialized training and like tactical training have you had, if any? I've been to um, it's called Fast One and Fast Two. It's a tactical firearms self defense class at OSP. Uh, I've been to both of those classes. It's an advanced tactical type course. Um, I've been to um, 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 Officer Down Civilian Rescue, mm -hmm. which is like a, um, a tackle type mm -hmm. response to um, people down in active shooter situations. Yeah. I've been, I have to look at my file, I've also been, the last year I went to Advanced Tactical Weapons School. Mm -hmm. um, where um, you learn uh, how to shoot various types of weapons, how to respond to different types of um, scenarios, um, kind of um, okay. makes you a better, sh you know, a better shot, and um, mm -hmm. helps you make better decisions under stress and whatnot. Um, so you've had additional tactical training, and uh, um, how, how often would you say you get any type of training? Every would you say every every year, every well, few months? I'm probably. I probably, um, as far as extra training like that, I probably get go once or twice a year. Okay. But that's outside of our shooting training that we do to like qualify with our weapons and whatnot. Okay, very good. And, and on that, um, are you qualified on the weapon that you fired that night? Yes. Okay. And what is this specific weapon? It is an AR-15 uh, rifle. Mm -hmm. um, it is not. Um, issued by the police department. Mm -hmm. It was my personal rifle. Okay. We are allowed to carry our personal rifles mm -hmm. um, as long as they're an AR-15 style mm -hmm. um, rifle and as long as the um, our weapons instructors um, check them mm -hmm. for safety mm -hmm. and that we qualify with them. Okay. And once we do all that then we have to get the weapon approved by the chief and he'll sign off on it, and then we're allowed to carry them on duty. Okay. And how how long have you been qualified with that weapon with the Department of Naval Carry? Um, Approximately. Probably four years. Okay. Where is that weapon typically stored? In in your when do you have a vehicle every night? You yeah, have, like, yeah. Vehicle? It's um, we have a rack in between our seats. Okay. That we can um, that it's secure. Okay. You, at some point, chose to. That is your weapon of choice that night. Mm -hmm. um, 
give us the give us the reason for that. You already touched on it a little bit, but go through that again. Um, the reason I grabbed the rifle um, was that, from what we knew, the suspect had a rifle, mm -hmm. um, and. Um, and based on um, what we knew, mm -hmm. um, that was just seemed the appropriate weapon if, if, because if a rifle can reach out mm -hmm. you know, really far, then we may have to shoot a distance as well. So that's um, the reason. Okay. Well, you, you wouldn't be stuck with a handgun against another type of AR weapon or another type of rifle that have, may have more firepower. Correct. Okay. And you still you felt like that was the appropriate choice for that situation. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Sean, I know you guys. Um, the department had you take a toxicology test and uh, urine sample took from you, and we got we have those results. But uh, can you verify for us for this interview? Were you drinking and all that thing? No. Okay. Um, were you using any type of drugs? No. Okay. Did you, did you did you feel you were reasonably well rested that night? Yes. Okay. Um, lighting in the store. How would you how would you describe that? Well lit. Well lit. Okay. At one point you said that you told. You said there wasn't much discussion between you and Darko outside. You knew what you guys were doing when inside. At one point, you said that you made a statement to Darko inside the the store when you guys were clearing the aisles, um, and when you said something that you you cover um, one of his sides. Mm -hmm. Is that accurate? Yeah. Which, which side did you say you cover? Um, you, you recall, if you recall. Yeah, I told him I'd cover to the right if he was going to check the final row to the left. Okay. Do you recall saying anything else between you and the both of you during that time? Um, no. Were you familiar with that Walmart? Yes. Okay. So you knew where the Pets area was? Yes. Okay. Did you ever encounter that sub subject, suspect, prior to that night? No. Okay. Have you learned his name since the incident? Yes. Okay. And um, you still, still no, no, no. not familiar with him? Okay. I think we'll stick at the uh, uh, point of the shooting for a minute, Sean, if you're comfortable with that for a minute. The, uh, so you told uh, Darko you cover to the right, and that's is that are we an aisle away from the encounter with the suspect at that point, or is, is it right there? By when I said that, we were reaching like the end of the store. Okay. Like we were kept walking, we go into the garden center. You cleared some aisles already. Yeah. Okay. So we're basically reaching that final row yeah. of the pet area. Okay. Basically the the solid part of the store. Mm -hmm. We're reaching the end of it. Okay. So in that final row is when mm -hmm. I had that brief discussion, you know, I'll cover your right. Mm -hmm. okay. And because he was kind of taking the lead as we were going down the okay. down the aisle. Is, is that appropriate to the way you guys have been trained? Yeah. Okay. As he's taking the lead, it sounds like what you were telling me is he observes the suspect first. Yes. Okay. And you went through it, and you went through things a couple of times here, so forgive us for, for asking. The uh, He, at some point, is moving, at some point, stops, and then we're at that last aisle. Um, so so before you hear those commands, is that is that appropriate? He's, he's moving slowly and then stops right before those commands are given? Darko? Yes. Um, I don't know. I don't know what you mean. Okay. Yeah. Probably, probably poorly said. The uh, you guys were clearing the aisles, and yeah. you got you got to the last aisles where you right. encountered the suspect. Mm -hmm. um, Darko, is, what, what's your indication? What's your first indication that he sees something? 
When he says, drop your weapon. Okay. That was the first thing I heard. Okay. Is Darko taking cover at that time? Um, I can't say. Um, I, I, like I said, I was covering to the right, and as soon as I heard him say that, I just immediately swung around and basically came um, and saw the, the suspect with the, with the weapon. Okay. Um, my focus was, I could see Darko out the corner of my eye, and my main goal was to clear Darko mm -hmm. so he was out of sight of, or out of a line of fire, mm -hmm. and um, to focus on the suspect. Was Darko moving at the time when he said, when he told the suspect to drop his weapon? I I can't say for sure. Okay, okay. But you clearly moved around him, so at some point you're mo either moving quicker than him or he stopped and you moved. No, um, basically I know he was to the left in the aisle and I moved to his right. Okay. And we kind of just squared off mm -hmm. with, with the suspect. Okay. Darko says, drop your weapon, drop your weapon, to the best of your recollection. Mm -hmm. He says it twice. Um, I, I can't say if he said twice. It was, he was saying repeatedly. Okay. Um, I, I don't know exactly how many times he said it. It could have been more, but it's at least more than one is what you're saying. Yes. Okay. Um, how, how quickly do you observe the suspect from the time that he says that? Um, he says, drop your weapon, and then I just, um, I immediately turned and saw him um, standing in the aisle with the rifle. Okay, and what do you recall again about what you, so you see the suspect, how would you describe what you saw? Um, I saw him standing there, um, and like I said before, I see him and I see the rifle. Um, I identified it as a rifle, um, and by the time I identified it as a rifle, um, uh, Sergeant Darko had already told him to drop the weapon, and um, so that's how I saw him. He was basically standing there. You, you've you've said this. You you gave me your reasoning for why what you did. Um, I'm, I'm going to ask again specifically. So those commands were given. Why why did you pull the trigger? Um, here's why I pulled the trigger. He began moving with the rifle in hand. Um, he made what I consider, um, he took a stance to where I felt he could have used it um, from what I could see in my angle that he could have used the rifle at, at, at any moment. The rifle was within, you know, within his body, within grasp, um, and he began moving with it. Um, it, was, it was like, it, um, best I can describe just like an agitated movement with it um, as if he wasn't going to listen mm -hmm. and that he was about to use it um, is how I describe it. Um, so um, based on that, just identifying him with a rifle and, and, and um, the backdrop and, and making sure, you know, there's no other people around and, and, um, and I felt quite certain at that point that um, when he wasn't um, listening to us, mm -hmm. that he was going to harm people okay. with that rifle. The call came in as what again? When the initial call came in, what details did you have from dispatch? I had details that black male had a rifle in the store. Mm -hmm. He was waving it around, um, pointing it at people, um, and he was loading it in the corner of the store. Okay. Is that a common call that you encounter as an officer? No. I've never um, taken a call like that before. Okay. Um, did, um, did that does that cause a heightened sense of alert within you to get a call like that? Yes. Okay. And that's my initial thought before we went in. Uh, what I was thinking to myself was this is Walmart. They sell weapons. They sell real guns. They sell fake guns. Um, we've had calls before at similar stores like Dick's where people have been like returning weapons mm -hmm. 
or had purchased a weapon where we've gotten a call, mm. um, but it wasn't as serious. It was a person just walking mm -hmm. with a gun mm -hmm. out of the store. It wasn't somebody waving it around, pointing it at people, and currently loading it. Mm -hmm. um, so this was very rare, unusual call, um, and um, with you know, with all this, with how busy Walmart is, and with the amount of people that have purchased items similar mm -hmm. um, um, weapon style items in Walmart. We, I have never taken a call like this before. Okay. <coughs> since since the incident occurred, uh, there's been a lot of media on what occurred, and then we we now know what the suspect was carrying at the time. Are you are you aware at this point what the suspect was carrying? Yes. Okay. At any time during your response, did anybody indicate to you that he the suspect had anything other than an active working firearm that fired fire actual bullets. I didn't, there was no other word that it was anything but a rifle. Okay. And during your walk through Walmart, did you have any other indication from anyone else outside of dispatch or anything that this, this may be a pellet gun as opposed to a, a firearm that fires bullets? No. Okay. Having seen, um, when you first observed the firearm, did anything that you saw or the weapon indicate to you that it was anything other than an active firearm? No. Um, when it was laying on the ground, <coughs> when I walked past it after I engaged the suspect, I confirmed myself, um, yes, that is a rifle. It, you know, that I'm telling myself. Um, um, because, you know, you see it, mm -hmm. you know it's a rifle, mm -hmm. and then, you know, then it's down the ground, mm -hmm. you're telling yourself, yes, it was a rifle, and um, I, I, um, I, no one told me otherwise until like the next day, I, I, I thought it was a rifle. Okay. Um, and, and it wasn't until the next day, until someone said? Um, I believe it was the next day, or was early that morning, or that night. At, um, least, at least several hours after the incident, basically. Yeah. Okay. And if I hear you correctly, Sean, you're saying that you, as an officer, had before been called to responses where someone um, reports a person with a gun, and you've had to use some discretion in determining. Uh, you said the call was a little more urgent this time, or a little more descriptive. Yeah. That there's some movements, but you responded to calls before, which turned out to be just a suspect turning a gun or so forth. So you've had to respond to calls before where. There were reports of a gun, but not to to the extent of this call. Correct. Okay. Sean, when you're in the store and Darko had made those commands, is it accurate where you're telling me that you're saying that the suspect did not immediately comply? Correct. Okay. Your Additional thought processes were he's armed, is potentially a threat to you, potentially a threat to other customers. Is that what you said? And, and Sergeant Darko, yes. Yeah, Sergeant Darko as well. Okay. Did you also specify that he had what you thought could be a potential escape route from beyond your 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 guys's hold on that that section of the aisle where you could get back to the store and harm yes. others? Okay. And are we hearing you accurately that that added to your decision that you felt deadly force was necessary? Yes. Okay. Sean, you fired how many shots? Two. Okay. Is that consistent with your training? Yes. Okay. Um, now that we've had a couple of days, uh, coming up on three days to, to reflect on everything, are the actions that you and Darko took in that store consistent with the training you had that that um, this, this this scenario would be based upon? Yes. Okay. When the suspect is down, when you fire, I should say, the suspect will go down pretty quickly. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. And then 
he, he does get back up. Um, are you aware at that time that where the weapon is after you fired? His yeah. weapon? Yes. Okay. And where was it? It was on the ground between me and him. Okay. Suspect gets back up. Is that accurate? Yes. Okay. Are you moving toward him at the time after the shots are fired? Yes. Okay. He gets back up, and did you, am I correct in saying you said it was an aggressive fashion, or did your perception was that it was aggressive fashion? Yes. Okay. He's moving towards you at that point? He's moving towards the gun, like he's looking down at it, like, like okay. he's about to reach for it. Okay. Um, would you say that in that moment you had the opportunity to fire if you chose to? Yes. Okay. And, again, you, you've talked this through. Tell us again why you didn't fire at that point. I didn't fire the second time um, because he didn't quite get there to the weapon. Um, he, um, and that, that's the reason why. Um, I was yelling at him, yelling at him to get down on the ground, mm -hmm. and um, he just stopped short and collapsed. Okay. So, again, you, you thought at the moment the threat was at least momentarily, even for how split of a second, it was neutralized unless he made it to that gun or got a little closer to where uh, you may not be able to recover. Is that I'm sorry, can you repeat that? Yeah, um, I'm just I'm trying to get a little more descriptive detail on your discretion you used in not pulling the trigger a second or for a second instance. So what went through your mind immediately is you know it sounds like you had a, a, a significant thought process there that you were aware the gun was not under his control at that moment. Right. Although he's moving towards the gun, it could be a threat. It sounds like you rationalized that that's what second he wasn't a threat yet. Um, I, I consider him a threat um, even after he went down. Okay. Um, he, um, I just had it my phone. Um, if he would have reached the weapon, I, I, I felt that him coming back to the weapon mm -hmm. was a threat. Mm -hmm. And if he would have made an attempt to pick up the weapon again, mm -hmm. I was ready to fire again. Okay. Um, but like I said, as he was making his way towards it, um, he kind of hesitated or just stopped short mm -hmm. and just kind of went down. I don't know if he went down because I was telling him to go down. or Basically, he just he went down uh, right. before he um, grabbed the rifle. Okay. In, in your recollection, he made a secondary aggressive movement towards you and or towards that rifle and you didn't fire and he subsequently went down on his own? Yes. Okay. <laughs> he went down and you said that you had to, um, what was your direction to him after he was down then? What did I tell him? Yes, sir. Um, I told him to put his hands behind his back. Okay. And he was kind of, I told him to roll over. I think he was on his back. Um, I told him to roll over, put his hands behind his back, and he was yelling um, something. I can't remember what he was yelling. He was yelling at me. Mm -hmm. And he eventually rolled over, and I told him to put his hands behind his back. And um, he eventually put his hands out to his sides or down to the side, but I had to manually pull his hands together. Um, to get him cuffed. Okay. And you cuffed him when I shot? Um, because that's what we're trained to do in those situations. Um, he is still potentially a threat to people around him. We don't know if he has any more weapons on him. Um, so we cuff him for his safety and our safety. Okay. Do you recall at, um, do you recall the suspect saying anything um, before the shots were fired? No. Okay. Do you recall the suspect saying anything during or immediately after the shots were fired? Um, nothing that I can understand. Um, he was yelling um, something. Um, when he was coming back towards the rifle, I could see him saying something. I, could, I couldn't understand it. And I, my ears were ringing. Mm -hmm. so I couldn't quite hear what he was saying. Mm -hmm. And then when he went down, he was kind of yelling. And I can't, uh, he didn't say anything that, that I can remember. Okay. okay. Um, let's talk about the, the 
response for a minute after that. So after you cuffed him, did you feel that uh, he was at least relatively secure at the moment? Yes. Okay. And then what were your next actions? Our next actions, we secured the suspect, kind of checked around, make sure there are no more threats, nothing dangerous around, and then our priority is his condition. Um, so <clears throat> I believe Darko called for a medic, um, and I um, kind of quickly assessed him, and I told um, Officer Stahl, who was on the scene at that point, that we needed a medical kit um, due to the wounds to his arms. Um, I felt that um, loss of blood was an, was an issue. Mm -hmm. uh, we're trained how to um, apply tourniquets. Um, so I had Officer Bondi and um, Officer Stahl um, bring tourniquets, and I believe Officer Stahl applied both of them to his arms to try and stop the bleeding as much as possible. Mm -hmm. And at that point, um, th those were the only um, injuries I could see um, at, that, at that time. So we um, kind of just kept them awake as best we could um, and waited for the medics um, to get there. Okay, so you were actively engaged in trying to attend to the suspect's medical needs? Yes. Okay. Sean, did you make a verbal statement um, about this incident to the police department? Yes. After the incident? Okay. And we're not done yet, unfortunately, but the, is there anything at this point that, in the, in the time you've had in between that statement that, and from what you can recall, is there anything that, that critically you would change to that verbal statement? Um, no, I mean, that initial statement to me, it seemed like it was just a almost like a brief summary of what happened, mm -hmm. what they wanted. So I gave okay. a brief summary. And you still feel it's accurate today? Yes. Yeah. Okay. okay. Sean, do you have uh, have you had prior involvement in any shooting incidents? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Can, can you tell us what that was? Um. I was involved in a shooting back in 2010 um, where me and my partner responded to a domestic violence incident and um, we, uh, during our response and entry into the suspect's apartment, he, um, he came, he jumped up from the living room with a big butcher knife and charged at me and my partner. Okay. Um, and he was given verbal command to stop and drop the knife and he did not. And he was right on top of us. Okay. And um, I fired and um, shot and killed him. What, what uh, type of weapon were you holding at that time? It was a six hour P229 uh, 40 caliber. Handgun? Yes. Okay. And the, was there an investigation done after that incident? Yes. Okay. What were the results of that investigation? Um, that I acted appropriately and within policy and within law. Okay. Any other shooting incidents? Um, not that I've been directly involved in. Okay. Yeah, I've any had to shoot. Anything you've been directly involved in? Okay. Um, with, are you saying that you've been at, at other incidents where other officers have shot? No, I've just been... <laughs> Shooting incidents. I saw that's a broad term. Right. Yeah. I know. I'm, I'm, I haven't yeah. had to shoot on them these two times. Okay. Have you ever been disciplined for a use of force issue? No. Okay. John, you're being very thorough, and I, I appreciate that. Um, and. You know how this is being an officer that a lot of times, you know, certain people remember different details um, one way or another. Um, if Sergeant Darko were to have recalled that after he gave commands to the subject that you gave a subsequent command to the subject, either something along the lines of get down or put it down, um, you said you don't recall making any commands yourself at this point? At this point, I okay. can't. Okay. 
is it um, out of the realm of possibility that is that Darko may just um, be remembering it that way? Do you think maybe you're just not forgetting? Is it is it can, um, you, can, you, can you close it out one way or the other, 100% or, or can you not? I can't close it out 100%. Okay, thank you. And there's still things that are foggy and um, absolutely where I can, you know, one day I'll see things crystal clear and the next day everything's foggy. It's just um, so I, I don't remember. Okay, I don't remember saying anything. Have you given given, given the opportunity to speak with anybody about the about the shooting? Um, Council or anything like that. Yeah, I'm scared. Okay. You don't have to. You don't have to comment on that. No, that's fine. But yes, I have. Okay. And you went into great detail about the medical um, situation uh, for the for the suspect. Did you feel the the medical attention given to him at the time was was appropriate? Yes. Okay. And you went into detail in saying that you personally um, tried to um, keep him alert and awake. Is it because you felt he was lapsing into unconsciousness and yes. result in something? Okay. Um, other officers responded shortly thereafter you. Mm -hmm. is, is there anything you saw that you would consider inappropriate actions done by anybody for this incident? No. Do you believe everybody acted professionally? Yes. Do you believe that everybody on the department that arrived, whether from your department or others, I believe there's multiple jurisdictions, do you believe everybody that um, was close enough, made every attempt to save that suspect's life? Yes. Okay. Sean, are you aware that uh, there were other medical issues going on in the, in the story, either yes. raised around there or shortly there? Can you tell us about those real quick? Yeah, the scene quickly became very chaotic, um, even more so because as soon as the suspect was down, we were getting reports of this from like it hears people um, going down with um, various health issues. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I believe, I don't know which officer, they were, from what I could hear on the radio, I was more focused on the suspect, but from what, I, from what I can hear on the radio, they're trying to get an AED to one of the people who went down. I don't know who it was. I don't know what their emergency was. Okay. Um, but uh, we were getting several reports that people were <coughs> having medical emergencies throughout the store. Okay. Did you have direct involvement in the, in the attention to any of those? No. Okay. So you're just hearing that over the radio and yeah. through, other, through other means. Okay. You do want to write still so far? Yeah. Okay. Um, what we're going to move into in a minute here is listening to some radio traffic and helping you identify what's going on there. See if that uh, triggers anything different. They're in the discussion. We'll watch a little bit of video, but Brent's going to have some questions for you right now. Next. Okay. Yeah, if you don't mind, Sean, um, I'm going to ask you a few follow-up questions, and it's just because I've been writing notes while you've been talking. Um, I'm not trying to scrutinize anything by the questions that I'm asking. It's just I'm unclear about something and want to make sure I've got it right in my mind, okay? Um, and first one, easy. Uh, what, what platoon are you on? The name of the platoon? Yeah, yeah. Do you have like, is it a number? Yeah. Name? I, <laughs> uh, I think, I think it's one. I, I really don't, I okay. really don't know. But you're on like a swing shift. Okay. I'm like my own. And do you, re do you report to a certain supervisor? Yeah. Okay, who do you report to? Well, at that particular time, it was Sergeant Darko. Um, okay, so at the time of the incident, you were reporting to Sergeant Darko? Yes. Okay. And Sergeant Platoon is Platoon 4. Okay. And do you split supervisors? I know you work from 11A and 11P, and I know Sergeant Darko works from 7P to 7A, correct? Yeah, the first, my super, first supervisor is Sergeant Molnar, and I'm with him from 11 to 7. Okay, so, so since you're on swing shifts, you have supervisors that change throughout your shift. Mm -hmm. Okay. And how long have you how long have you worked on that particular swing shift? Um, it's been I a year. Okay. So you've worked very closely with Sergeant Molnar and Sergeant Darko. Yes. Okay. Um, and you'll have to forgive me because Dave, when he I, I wrote down some questions and as he was going through, he answered some of them already. When the commands were given, 
by Sergeant Darko. Would you consider those commands clear, concise, and audible? Yes. So it was, in your opinion, do you think the subject could have easily heard, put it down or drop the weapon or whatever command, that, the exact words that Sergeant Darko gave? Yes. Okay. Were there any other audible indications um, surrounding you that would indicate the police were there or um, near the store? I don't, I don't understand. Okay. What you're saying. Um, typically, when police officers respond, they'll respond with lights and sirens. Mm -hmm. uh, did you hear any Did you hear any sirens going yeah. off at that time? Yeah, I heard. Um, um, well, when I pulled around, I heard sirens. Um, I heard Sergeant Darko's siren. I heard other sirens responding as well. Okay. You heard those clearly. I could hear those clearly from outside. Okay. Uh, did you hear them? And I know a lot was going on once you're inside. A lot, a lot of you know, chaos, as you said. Lots of crowded, uh, lots of crowds of people in there. Did you hear any of those sirens once you were inside the building? Not that I could hear. Okay. Hey, I didn't press this point with you, Sean. Um, we spoke to Darko, so sometimes that we assume that uh, you know other details you have, and we don't bring them on the open here. <laughs> uh, you said you're familiar with the store. I'm sorry to interrupt, Brent. Right. The pet section is in what area of the store in directional? Um, it is the southwest corner. Okay. Is that the front or the rear of the store? Front. Okay. So it's... Um, did you enter on the door side? I know you couldn't get in the nearest door, but the next door, Walmart has several front doors usually. The next door you enter was nearest to the pet store, so that's and that's yeah. close to where that's fairly close to where Darko staged because he was staging more near that other open door. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, Brent. That's okay. I'm gonna jump around. Yeah. Know, just because of the nature of where I made notations, um, I believe you said it was a personal weapon that you carried with you, the rifle, AR style platform. What was the make and model of that particular? Uh, I believe it's a Spikes Tactical. Spikes Tactical. Yes. And how long have you had that weapon? About four years. Okay. And you've already clarified that you've fully qualified with that weapon. Mm -hmm. And it's been approved by uh, your department, by your chief, to carry that weapon. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, we also went into uh, extent what type of training you have, FAST 1, FAST 2, officer down, civilian rescue training, advanced tactical weapons school, um, are those, will all those be reflected in your personnel or training records? Um, they should be, yeah. Okay. Have you ever had a chance to review your personnel or personnel record or your training record? Um, well, I keep copies of all my training certificates. Okay, so you have copies of all that? Yeah. Okay, great. Um, we have been made aware um, through our investigation and that the subject was talking on a cell phone. At any point did you notice that the individual was on the cell phone? No. Okay. When did you first become aware that a cell phone was even involved, if you, or unless you're hanging it first from me? Um, I think um, one of the detectives said something about a cell phone, that he may have been on the cell phone, or that he was talking on the cell phone prior to us arriving, um, but I didn't see him on the cell phone. Okay. So you're going to say detectives, you're saying after the incident. Yeah. I told you that. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, did you make any physical observations of the subject either before and after um, the incident? Did he appear intoxicated? Did he appear to be on drugs? Anything that gave you either, you know, a visual um, or, a, you know, um, there was nothing that I saw that would indicate he was on drugs okay. or under the influence or anything. I couldn't tell. Okay. And I know you got very close to him after, you know, you were rendering first aid to the individual. I didn't know if you made any observations as to those types of conditions when you were rendering first aid. No. Okay. And I'm not sure if we specified if something I missed when we were talking about it, but I know when you're rendering first aid, you apply tourniquets. Um, I'd say we, um, officers stall, I, I consider a team effort, but um, I was just kind of walking, we were, I was just helping officer stall, apply them, he was, he had rubber gloves on, was putting them on. Sure. I, don't, I don't know if we clarified where those tourniquets were placed. 
They were placed on his upper arms. Okay. Can you go into the extent of the injuries and why you thought the tourniquets were necessary? Um, he had one severe wound to one of his elbows. I forget which elbow to where. Like it was like there was nothing there. Like it was completely gone. Um, so I knew that was a very serious, potentially critical injury. Um, so um, and then he had a wound to his other arm as well. So um, with um, with those types of injuries, you know, stopping the blood as soon as possible is critical to survival. So um, I decided to try and get tourniquets on as soon as possible, try and stop the bleeding. Okay. Very good. Uh, that's all I've got. If you want. Okay. Um, how, you, how you doing? You need a break or something? Okay. Uh, fairly quick here, we'll listen to the rate of traffic. Um, what we want you to do, you don't have to identify um, every little thing for it. We want you to identify to yourself if um, things pop up and you want to say, hey, that's, that's him, that's this. Anything that triggers a memory, we'll probably stop asking questions through it. Um, we're going to start at uh, 2022, and that uh, should be the first call on that. Right? Mm -hmm. All right, keep Unit and, and for myself, I just wanted to nail down over the radio that he was, in fact, pointing at, at least that's what dispatch said, at pointing at people and waving it around. I just wanted to be certain that that was the case um, before we get entry. Okay. Does that elevate the situation? Yes. Mind? Okay. Very good. And if we heard that longer transmission, that's where they identified rifle, um, waving it around, which you clarified, and loading it. Yes. Okay. Twenty-five. Twenty-six. Twenty-five. 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 Tw
at you. Bump it again. That's right now. You're clear. 20, 27. Not sure. I can't tell. Okay. And you don't specifically recall it being you at this point? <laughs> yeah, it's it, this is that's that's a, a lot going on in that situation. Right, that, that's I, the question. Um, I can't I can't tell if that's okay. Uh, okay, Sean. Um, okay, so that went pretty quick from kind of uh, like I said, the traffic goes from from one thing to the next there really quick. Um, this is still 2027. This is an additional. Did you hear that part, Sean, where it uh, sounds like somebody's saying something close to on your back? Let's play it again. You gotta, you gotta kind of listen in between. It's right before that. It's right in between that. Mm -hmm. Do you believe that might have been you? Yeah. Okay. I'll put it more time just so we get the gist. Do you think it was you saying on your back? Yeah, I think so. Okay. So and to the best of your recollection, you would have been saying on your back at what point? Um, I think um, I was probably saying put your hands behind your back. Very good, because that could be, um, yeah. Or, thank okay. You. Yeah, all we could hear clearly was the part about back. Mm -hmm. So. I think, you know, with this review, I think what you stated to us is you think he was on his back, you thought he was on his back, you tried to get him over to get his, get him cuffed, mm -hmm. get his, but you gave instructions for him to get his hands behind his back. Right. Okay, so that's what you recall it. Yes. Okay. But in any case, you don't recall any time giving him instructions to get on his back that's counter to the way you remember it. Okay. Correct. Down female or a 
I can't remember what they specifically said, but uh, is this, everything prior to that point is for the suspect. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, back in the sporting goods section, that's... Okay. There's a female customer back in the sporting goods section that's having a medical emergency. I need an additional medic for her. Response right there. Okay. Might we play one more time and ask a couple questions? Oh, go ahead. Doing all right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry, it's hard to get this exactly right. Okay, coming up on it here. Um, first leg says, like we see, I believe, are dark holes that. Mm -hmm. Make a circle around him. Mm -hmm. That change anything for you? So that's on. All right. I'm guessing that's okay. And that's in the center of the aisle. I'm assuming. Yeah, and so you can see there's like a divider there in the aisle. So um, and that's why I couldn't really, because it, it looks like he went around the other side mm -hmm. of it. So which is why I didn't really have a, couldn't really see him. Yeah, this. Let me pause this.
This is the pet tower right here. Okay, this is early in the day. over here. Does that make sense to you? Mm -hmm. Okay, the way I was good. What's going to happen in... Uh, in a minute, the suspect with the rifle is going to come walking through here. So this is five minutes before your arrival, or before the, your engagement. for you about the time that we see the suspect which is there. About the time we see him is about the same time as the 911 call where the guy's giving the detail about the rifle and the waving it around and so forth. Have you seen this video prior to now? No. Okay. I will gladly let you run through and watch the whole thing for five minutes, but I will, will tell you what happens is there he was raising it up again. Um, this is the standpoint, this is the um, location where he stays for the next five minutes, roughly within a little five, ten foot area, just kind of looking around and making movements with the rifle and he's on the phone. And this is different from your vantage point in the store. We realize that this is up higher, it's to the right. You're coming from a lower level down to the left where you see him. Um, and you'd be blocked off somewhat by this, is that what I believe you're saying? Right, for your, your view until you pied it off or got around the corner. Um, but that's where, that's where he remains. Okay. Okay. Now we're going we're gonna to go to the point where you engage him. Um, you won't see yourselves on this video frame until he's down and you're going to be walking forward on it. Um, are you okay with me proceeding? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, from that point he remains down, that's where you go through the cuffing and so forth. Um, for purposes of obvious clarity, that's you in the white. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's Darko in the dark uniform. Okay. Did um, anything change your perspective about seeing that right there? Is everything recalling no. it accurately? Yeah. Okay. Just a little bit different. Uh, different angle and uh, I believe we probably have a much clearer observation of the suspect from where we're at here than you probably did. Is that seem accurate? Yeah. Okay. <coughs> I know we don't have audio. Would you mind if we rewound it a little bit? Um, um, yeah. I, I believe we can see a reflection of what is a muzzle flash and I don't, I don't know if you can verify that based upon um, your actions. But it looks like it reflects off the floor. Do you know the exact second so I can watch? It's going to be around 50. 55, yeah, 45, 40, 54 to 55, I'm sorry. You'll see him startle, then you'll see it. I'll watch the number for you when you have 50, I'll count it down. Forty-eight, 
down there? Yeah. Okay. Can you your screen? And again, <coughs> we're just looking for, you know, your observations, what you're seeing based upon what happened that evening. shooting start about one second that, later I mean that's what <clears throat> I remember seeing right there okay. so I remember seeing the silhouette of the magazine mm -hmm. like you can see right there I remember seeing that the rifle mm -hmm. um, I remember him standing there so that's only when I describe um, seeing the silhouette of the gun and seeing that it's a rifle that's exactly what I'm, what I'm talking about right there in this, in this instance where we paused it he's got the rifle at almost a 45 degree angle pointed outward um, and not not next to his body where he has been keeping it some of the time right okay and, and from your vantage did it appear as though the muzzle of that gun was coming towards your direction do you, do you recall that I mean that's it, the motion was just all like one motion and he like swung towards us so I mean it, Okay, so that was just the swing. And it's still less than a second on that pause. See, like right there. I mean, that's it. And that's, and that's what you see. I mean, I saw him bringing the rifle up. I saw him, that's the stance, an aggressive stance to where he was, could have easily, you know, shoot us or any of the people in the store. And that action right there and him starting to move with it mm -hmm. is and it, I, it's at 826 55 p.m. according to the Walmart surveillance okay. camera you got him bent knees um, an excitable stance at least to say one way or the other and rifles pointed about 35 degrees Again, I'm going to ask the same question. Did it appear to you that that rifle was coming up in your direction? That's what it looked like to me. Okay. Okay, and then he's one second later. He's uh, going down. What more do you want to see? Um, can you just play it again? Yeah. From there? Yeah. Or just play it from the beginning again? You want to go back before the yeah, thing? Yeah. I don't mind pausing it again as much as you like. Either. No, that's fine. It's from there. It's fine.
just let it part down. But We are not well. It's yeah, 
it's a mixed question. We are, Brent and I work for the BCI, which is part of the Attorney General's office. Mm -hmm. um, right now, the prosecutor's office is, is really in control of everything overall. Mm -hmm. um, our office works in conjunction with the prosecutor's office and with the, with the uh, police department and EB. So what they're looking at is protection of the, of the evidence and it's being it's an open investigation, not getting stuff that might harm the investigation. The bottom line is Brent and I don't make the call. Our bosses don't directly make the call. It's up to the entities of the attorney general's office and the prosecutor's office mostly about okay. what's appropriate for the situation. And um, they make considerations for the police department but uh, you know we are working outside of the police department. Is that okay. a fairly good? Yeah, I, I mean we're we're working under the, the sunshine laws that we have to abide by, and we have been adamant that we don't want anything released regarding an open current investigation with an unnamed suspect. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's that's the way we're going to approach it. But as Dave said, um, those ultimate decision as to what is and isn't released that's not our call. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, hey, Sean, hey, forgive me. Um, <coughs> you slowed us down. You gave, gave me another question, um, and we may have covered this. I know we talked about the authenticity of the firearm, and you did. And your question about the media brought it up because the attorney general's office did release yesterday that he was carrying a pellet gun um, during the transmissions and the radio traffic and everything that never came up that that uh, this gun was anything but a active working firearm, correct? Correct. Okay. And you didn't learn it until the next day or at least several hours after the incident? Correct. All right. And, and I know we discussed that again. I just went in our discussion with Darko <coughs> and we covered that as well. I was blocking in my head. Anything else from anybody? Sir? Okay. And I don't know if we said at the beginning of the interview, but Vince Pop, your attorney, is with FOP attorney, and he's been in the room the entire time. Okay, we're going to call that at uh, 2.49 p.m.